Stan Gibalisco here. I would like to explain a little something about a topic discussed in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, published by McGraw-Hill. I have before me the fifth edition, that's edition number five, published in 2011. And I've got the book turned to page 340, where I'm showing you figure 19-5. This uh, particular section of the book discusses something called a PN junction. A PN junction in a semiconductor diode. Now typically in a semiconductor diode we have a piece of P-type semiconductor material joined to a piece of N-type semiconductor material. Now by P that stands for positive. That is a semiconductor material that has been doped, that is to say impurities have been added, in such a way that it, cre it causes the material in a manner of speaking to want to acquire electrons. They call that an acceptor impurity. Whereas the N-type semiconductor, N standing for negative, meaning that it wants to has a tendency to want to get rid of electrons. They call that a donor impurity. So you've read about all of this if you've gotten very far in this book. But there's something kind of interesting that happens in a semiconductor diode when it is forward biased as is shown in figure 19-5a versus reverse biased as shown at B. Now when we forward bias the semiconductor diode as shown at A the n-type material has a relatively negative voltage with respect to the p-type material whereas when we reverse bias the diode, the exact opposite situation occurs. The n-type material is relatively positive with respect to the p-type material. Now in the case of forward bias, what happens is that these little black dots, these are electrons by the way, these little black dots, tend to be repelled from the negative pole, that is the left-hand side, and attracted to the positive pole, that is the right-hand side. So these electrons, these extra electrons in the n-type material move towards the right, towards the junction, the p-n junction. On the right-hand side, holes, which are electron deficiencies in a sense, atoms that need electrons or tend to want electrons. That's, that's a, a, a sort of a figurative way of speaking about it. These uh, particles or these entities, these holes, which are little white circles, are repelled from the positive pole because a hole, being an electron deficiency, has a positive charge. It's repelled from the positive pole and attracted towards the negative pole, again, towards the junction. So the electrons and the holes rendezvous at the junction, and that creates a state of affairs where current can be conducted through this device. If you consider current as a flow of electrons, it would go from left to right. If you consider conventional current, which flows or goes from the positive to the more negative pole, it would be from right to left. But in any case, this diode will conduct as long as this voltage is sufficient to overcome the forward breakover threshold of the diode. And in a silicon diode, that is typically five or six tenths of a volt. If the voltage is not at least that great, then there will be no conduction. This thing will act as an insulator, almost like a capacitor, like, like an open circuit. 
Now in the case at B where we have the opposite bias, reverse bias, the p-type material has a negative charge with respect to the n-type. So we might connect a battery here, connect the negative pole of the battery over here to the p-type, the positive pole over to the n-type. So electrons attracted to the positive pole migrate away from the junction and the holes attracted to the negative pole, remember holes have a positive charge, these entities will also move away from the junction creating a lack of charge carriers right around the junction. And the greater that voltage gets, the, the, the higher that voltage that reverse bias gets, the wider that junction will become. So in effect, this diode has a certain junction capacitance. Junction capacitance that varies with the amount of reverse bias. As we increase the reverse bias voltage, this depletion region gets wider, increasing the gap between the, quote, plates, unquote, of the capacitor. That would be the P and N type materials themselves. So the junction capacitance goes down. As we reduce the reverse bias, the junction capacitance goes up. And that is, in fact, the principle by which a varactor diode works. Varactor being a contraction of the words variable reactor. And by reactor, we mean variable reactance device, not, a, not an atomic reactor or a or a nuclear reactor, but a, but a reactive device that exhibits capacitive reactance. So it, it exhibits variable capacitive reactance. That is a specialized type of diode that can be used in frequency modulation and things like that. Okay, so that is basically the way that a semiconductor diode works. Now, if we increase this reverse bias and keep increasing that reverse bias, bias voltage eventually will reach a point where this entire situation deteriorates, breaks down. The reverse bias is so great that it overcomes this uh, tendency to not conduct. In other words, it forces conduction. And when that happens, we have a condition called avalanche breakdown. Uh, that is known as the avalanche effect. And uh, normally in a diode, we do not want that phenomenon to occur, except in the specialized type of diode, where we do want to take advantage of that. Oops, not S. Zener diode. A Zener diode is also uh, known as an avalanche diode. It has a specific avalanche voltage determined at the factory and it's used as a voltage regulator and limiter and things like that. But normally in a rectifier we would not want avalanche breakdown to take place. So we have to make sure that we have a diode with sufficient peak inverse voltage rating, or PIV. We do not want the peaks in our reverse bias to exceed the avalanche uh, threshold, or we will get faulty performance in a rectifier. So you can read all about this in the book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, how a PN junction in a semiconductor material can in fact be used to create various phenomena, rectification, uh, detection, modulation, mixing, and all of those kinds of things. That is how a diode works. There are many, many different uses for semiconductor diodes, and they're manufactured for a wide variety of purposes. So that will pretty much conclude this little explanation of how a PN junction works.
I recommend that you obtain the latest edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. If you want to get... Well, of course I'm going to pitch my own book. I mean, really. Seriously. I, what would I do? Tell you don't buy my book? <laughs> well, <laughs> Stan Jibalisco signing off. Ham Radio Station W1GV, by the way. Those are my ham radio call letters, and that's how I got into this whole electronics business in the first place. W1GV. I guess if you Google on W1GV, you'll get a bunch of hits that show some of the little articles and things like that that I've written in various magazines and that have been published. And then, of course, you'll get a bunch of junk, too. You know, you always get junk on the Internet. The Internet is the junk capital of the universe. Stan Jibalisco, signing off until next time. From the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, so long.